Hi, scurvy dogs! Today, we will not be swimming through the waste of the dirtiest internet port water, no. Today is more of a refreshing swim in a public swimming pool's boot bath. It's more a disappointing example of basic religiousness helped by a massive denial of some parts of the reality. I came across the channel of Jew in the City, which is not an unsympathetic channel about the Jewish culture and belief. As a Pastafarian pirate I found it quite boring, but the making is elaborate and one can recognize a cultural and educational interest of the channel, if you're interested in the topics presented. However, as usual with religious matters, when it comes to science, they are facing an iceberg. Oh, you know it, you filthy bilge rats. There are two techniques in this case. Some choose to put the machines at maximum power in order to hit it bowsprit first and try to sink it, which usually results in interesting cases of dignity wreckage. Others choose to come close enough in order to collect bits from it that they may use as ice cubes in their cruise cocktails, which results in the worst vodka martini you may imagine and most probably in a temporary and quite disabling digestive disorder. This show chose the second option and got the help of a celebrity which happens to be playing in one of the few TV shows we have access to on my ship. Dear Jew in the City, In real life, I'm a neuroscientist who believes that the Torah is true. On TV, I play neurobiologist Amy Farah Fowler, who once noted that although she doesn't object to the concept of a deity, she's baffled by the notion of one that takes attendance. Here's my question. How do I explain the Big Bang Theory to people? I'm not referring to the show. That's simple to explain. To borrow a term from the vernacular, it's legit epic. But rather, how do I convey that the science I've studied fits in with the Jewish beliefs that I hold dear? By the way, big fan of your stuff. Big. Thank you, Dr. Mayan Bialik. A legitimate question indeed. My answer would be, do the mechanisms that you study work without taking a god into consideration? If yes, then you might ask yourself if something truly exists when you cannot prove its existence and does not have any reason for it to exist. But you ask for Jew in the City's opinion. Mayan, people often think that science and Judaism don't mix. L'chaim. Now, where were we? Oh yes, although the Torah doesn't mention a Big Bang, it does agree with the essence of the Big Bang Theory. The universe had a beginning. And here we start with the casual religious justification. See, one bit of my story matches halfway what we are looking for. But unfortunately, many religions have the same point of view. What about the version of the Norse mythology? Or the Hindu one? Hinduism has the advantage of being much older and followed by much more people than Judaism. Short, the criteria of partial consistency has never been significant, particularly when you have other contenders who can use exactly the same argument. I will speed up the video at some points. You have a relatively funny scenes, but it's not relevant here. But how about the rest of the biblical creation account? Can it fit into a scientific framework? Though there are Orthodox Jews that read the creation account in Genesis literally, many of us believe that it must be understood another way. The great rabbi Maimonides stated in the 12th century that the creation account given in the Torah is not intended to be literal in all its parts. This is an interesting point of view and actually one that may allow a peaceful life in society. However, as you said, it's not everyone's point of view in the religion. Which is funny, by the way, since something so magic and powerful as a religion should be clear for everyone who has received the light, huh? But anyway, please develop. 
There's a concept discussed by Talmudic commentators that if it doesn't make sense to understand a Torah verse literally, we must look for another meaning. For instance, although the Torah speaks about the hand of God, we don't believe that God has a literal hand, but rather a metaphysical one. Mm, okay, go on. I'm not quite sure I find that very relevant. And isn't it also written that he made the man in his own image? I'm confused. So what about the creation story gave rabbis pause for thought, even hundreds of years ago, regarding its literal meaning? The word, day. Because how do we define a day? Sunrise, sunset, swiftly for the day. Exactly, a day is defined by the sun rising and setting, and yet according to the Torah, the sun wasn't created until day number four. Therefore, there's an approach that says the days of creation weren't 24 hour days, but rather longer time periods during which life slowly evolved in the order listed in Genesis. Plants, than animals, than people. That is a very poor explanation. And here, deckhands and wenches begins the deep denial of reality. You are so twerking around on this one. The principle of the seven days creation is the base of the seven days week and the reason why you celebrate every week the Shabbat. Here you might say that this is also something that we have to see in a non-literal way, but then how come that the three last days are really days and not the four first? It makes no sense! Your God must have been able to tell the difference, I do hope! The guy created time, universe and all the shit around it, but forgot to mention that the four first days were the equivalent of millions of years? Or maybe was it a logarithmic week or something? Who knows? Apparently no one skipped the twerk anyway. Basically. You are saying that every week on Shabbat, Orthodox Jews forbid themselves to use electricity and to work just because of a misunderstood description of some kind of weird logarithmic imaginary week repeatedly revealed in a wrong way to insufficiently inform prophets throughout the whole history? I am sorry to have to tell you, but it's a saddening insult to everyone's intelligence. And once more a very poor justification. But how about dinosaurs? Where do they fit into the mix? Genesis mentions the creation of Tenenim Gedolim, or giant reptiles, which some believe refer to dinosaurs. Yeah, or a Komodo dragon, or it's just an animal from the imagination of the people who wrote the books, like dragons or unicorns. Once more you try to match bits of your story to what you are looking for. But once again, stories of dragons and other creatures that could match the dinosaurs are found in other mythology as well. Why should I believe your fairy tales rather than anyone else's? As I hope you've seen, believing in science does not preclude a person from believing in Torah, which is very important to know. Ah, uh, that's it? It's everything you had in the reserve? Because although science is quite effective at explaining how the stars got here, Unlike the Torah, it doesn't even attempt to explain the feeling of awe that overcomes us as we gaze up at them. Really? You see the stars as a nice picture in the sky, while scientists see them as the greatest achievement of the most brutal forces of the nature. If you had talked at least once to an astronomer, you would understand that people who understand stars get a much deeper feeling of awe oh, while looking at the night sky than you would ever do in front of your made for the human's eyes gleam pattern in the sky. I am planning to release soon videos with the title The Eyes of a Child, The Mind of an Adult so that you have a chance to see that atheist scientists are not just boring sad people who cannot feel any emotion. Good, this video is over but there is more to see. Another video also caught my attention on topic denial. Dear Jew in the City, my name is Blossom Russo. People always talk about how sexist Orthodox Jews are, which I find upsetting since I've always been a feminist. Is it true? Are women really looked down upon in religious Judaism? Thanks. Blossom from Los Angeles. Blossom. And once more I'm going to fast forward a bit to your answer. <laughs> Thank you.
Let's start from the beginning, like Adam and Eve beginning. The Torah shows us that woman is at the pinnacle of creation. As we see from the account in Genesis, God creates things in order from simple to complex. Light, water, plants, animals, man, and finally, woman. No wonder men can never understand us. And there it starts for the funny part. I know it's halfway joke, but when I do jokes about the creation which finish with women are less intelligent than men, I have 25,000 feminists calling me a pig and a patriarchal asshole. So please allow me to do one joke as an echo of yours. You will find it at the end of this video. And for the watchers, don't you dare calling me a sexist and not calling her that. Perhaps that's why the Talmud says that Sarah was a greater prophet than Abraham was. Yeah, but as far as I understood, there is much more said about Abraham in the Torah than about Sarah, according to Chabad.org at least. Maybe they spoke less about her in the book because they were such in awe. It couldn't be that even though Sarah was a greater prophet, they would speak more about Abraham just because he was a man. It also says in the Talmud that a man has to love his wife as much as himself and honor her more. That's just what the books say. How about everyday Orthodox Jewish life? A lot of people mistakenly believe that Orthodox women are forced to remain barefoot and pregnant. But not only are women allowed to work, many who choose to are doctors, lawyers, and businesswomen. Motherhood is a very important component of a woman's life as well, but not because she's subjugated to raise children, but rather because raising children means creating the next generation of the Jewish people. I noticed two things here. Let's imagine that no orthodox community has ever hindered a woman to work. And let's forget for a second that there has been a huge scandal in Great Britain a few years ago because a Jewish school tried to forbid the access to pupils who had been driven to school by their mothers. Then we can accept the choice of some women not to work in order to be mothers. But you know what? It's a lot to forget in order to see that way. Secondly, after this sentence I was quite puzzled without knowing why. Then I understood. You don't say the next generation, you say? Creating the next generation of the Jewish people. Literally, fuck the world. As long as our people is surviving, it's fine for us. No shit. You just try replacing the word Jewish by, for example, white. Raising children means creating the next generation of the white people. Yes, indeed, my dear. If someone was saying that, you would be shocked and would call it racism. And for good reasons. So what's the difference here? Now, while it's true that women don't have as many ritualistic obligations as men, it's not because we're considered second-class citizens. It's because we have a different way of achieving the same thing. We women, by our basic biological makeup, can do two things which are very similar to God. We can create life and sustain it. Since men don't have these features built in, they have more external ways of connecting. Neither way is better or worse, just different. And here starts the Stockholm Syndrome. Oh, but you see, there are reasons for us to have different rights. It's due to natural reasons. We utterly agree on the fact that the biology of men and women differ greatly and that it influences greatly the choices made by them during their lives. But once again, this is acceptable as long as you do have the choice. Maybe a woman does not want or even cannot have children. What happens then? Well, I'm no expert, but I think she still does not have the choice of what she can or cannot do in this case. Do you get the injustice here? In terms of women having a less public role in the synagogue, while it's true that we do, I'll let you in on a little secret. In traditional Judaism, the synagogue has never been an important part of Jewish life. The real center and focus of Jewish life has always been the home. And for anyone that's ever seen a typical Jewish home in practice... Honey! Yes, dear? You know who's in charge there. Sincerely yours, Jew in the City. And once more, you have used a very poor excuse and embraced your Stockholm Syndrome with all your strength. It's actually insulting for both sex. On the one hand, you do not acknowledge the right of a woman to have a role in the cult place and that without explaining any good reason for it. On the second hand, you are denying the right of men to be in charge at home. So basically, if a man wants to raise the children and take care of the home, he would not have the right to do so. 
This is exactly as sexist as the scenario where a woman does not have the right to give priority to her career. That's the funny thing with discrimination. It's not because it doesn't disturb you that everybody has to comply. The most important word here is choice. As long as you have the choice, based on a non-biased mix of equality and equity, every choice has to be accepted. But as soon as the choices are close to you, just because you were born with a different irrelevant feature, then it starts being bullshit. Let's switch the roles once more. Imagine you are being told by a Nazi fucktard that you do not have the right to visit the cathedral Notre Dame de Paris because you are Jewish and Jews do not need to visit Christian churches. Of course you would find it horribly racist and insulting. And even if you can live a wonderful and long life without having entered this cathedral, it's still a fucking injustice if you wanted to see it. Even though it's not something you need to do, you must have the right to do it just like anyone else. Pirately yours, Captain Franz van Trottel and his Jolly John Eugene. Leaving easy, leaving free, season ticket for a one way ride. Asking nothing, leave me be, taking everything in my stride. Don't need a reason, don't need a rhyme, ain't nothing that I'd rather do. Going down, going down, my friends are gonna be there too. Wow, I'm on the highway to hell. Speed limit Nobody's gonna slow me down Like a wheel Gonna spin it Nobody's gonna mess me around Hey Satan Paint my doom They ain't in a rocking band Who mama Look at me I'm on my way to the promised land Wow I'm on the highway to hell Highway to hell Highway to hell Highway to hell Woo! In Eden's garden? Adam was feeling lonely on this sunny Tuesday the 12th of June of the first logarithmic year of the creation. To God he went and said, God, I feel lonely and sad here. I would like to have someone by my side, someone I could trust, speak to and, and, and have emotional connection to. Dude, I got a concept, it's called The Woman. The Woman? Yep, dude, it's awesome. The woman will be attractive, clever, playful, always nice to you and will make you happy every day of your life. Wow, that's incredible! Yeah, sure, come on, let's do it! Yep, yeah, there's just one problem with that, dude. I would need something from you. Um, uh, what kind of something? Yeah, like, you know, one arm, two fingers of the remaining hand, half a foot, one eye and, um, yeah, <laughs> one of your balls, man. Um, okay, and, and, uh, what can I get for a rib?